You should be totally jealous. EMF 2022 t-shirt. And Raspberry Pi cup. Well, not to like. Hey guys, that's today. We are talking about cameras, IP cameras from Sonoff. But first, a bit of a disclaimer. I do like Sonoff products. Mostly because they cheap, cheerful, and, well, majority of the time, they do good job. Plus you can flash them with a smaller, that's always a plus, right? And this is where things get complicated because, oh boy, son of, what have you done? But first things first. In order for you to watch this video, I'm gonna start with a good thing so you could kind of, I don't know, set yourself a disappointment for later on and continue watching this video and not just turn off straight away. So let's get started. First of all, Sonoff, please, whoever designed this, like physically designed Enclosure and designed the Elite series, which I covered in the last video somewhere here, please pay them more money because they're doing a really good job. I really like from the design point what you are actually doing with your products recently. That's, that's a very good point. Now, if you have the previous IP camera, because this is the second uh, camera that uh, Sonoff has released, you'll instantly notice that that looks nice, modern, sleek, and the previous one, well, let's just say the saving grace, it was its price because it wasn't expensive, it was uh, okay, and it was tilt and pun. This is a 1080p IP camera with two-way audio, and from the product design standpoint, it's actually quite brilliant. I have no problems with it. It's nice and sleek and small and looks quite modern and has everything that it's supposed to have. It has a, well, in front you've got the LED that will tell you that well, the camera is recording. There is also infrared RA for night recording. There's a microphone because it has two-way audio. On the top you've got a SD card slot. At the back you will have the reset button and USB Type-C. Hey, you see, you can do USB Type-C, guys, right? It's great. And the grill covering a speaker. They even paid extra attention to the stand, which is really, really usable. First of all, it's magnetic, so you can slap it on a magnetic wall, a metal wall, and it will stay there. Uh, the base is quite big, so you can actually position the camera in any ridiculous way you want, and it won't tip. And there are mounting holes in case you just want to screw it to something, or just put it on whatever. And that's not all. If you undo the screw at the bottom, then you'll have access to a quarter-inch adapter, so you can screw it on a tripod or whatever it takes that quarter-inch adapters nowadays, like GoPro accessories. And it gets better. The two-way audio is actually quite decent. The microphone picks up quite well, and despite the speaker being tiny located at the back, I have no problem hearing what the other person is saying on the other end. When you are on this side of the camera, you'll have no problem understanding what the other person is uh, saying to you. And despite the speaker being so small, it sounds actually pretty good. And the pricing seems to be spot on as well, as camera like that would in UK easily cost 30 to 40 pounds, so it's about 50 dollars in total. And this is 26.90, which is, well, it's bargain, it's compact, it's, hey, it's what you want from IP camera. The only downside being is it's 2.4 GHz, but at this point you're probably gonna forgive this. And it's 1080p, right? And I know you're already expecting doom and gloom, but I still have a couple of good points. So let's start with the SD card support, which brings the SD card up to 256 gigs, so you've got plenty of storage. And speaking of storage, well, uh, you have RTSP support, so you can actually send the stream from this camera in a very simple way. Just click to generate the link, copy and paste the link to your RTSP uh, program, and voila, you are set up for RTSP with this camera. It's so easy. And despite its tiny size, even the night and performance, it's okay. The image is quite nicely exposed, you've got plenty of details. And there's, you know, some compression artifacts that, well, that's to be forgiven for the most part. And the footage is actually stored as MP4 files, so you can just simply grab the card, put it into your PC and grab all of that footage. Hey, what not to like, right? About that son of, we seriously have to talk about this. Now, I received this camera early, before it was released, and my experience with it was absurd. 
half of the things that Sonoff promised to me that's gonna work, it didn't work at the start and I've ended up not reviewing it on time because I just couldn't bring myself to actually re review an incomplete product. Now, granted that's been about a month ago and things got better thanks to a firmware upgrade and I finally get some features actually working properly so I don't get to complain now. So if you're getting a camera right now, you probably won't have the same issues I had at the beginning. But this is something I need to outline because in the future, if that's going to happen, I'm just going to lay up straight saying like, yeah, that's the experience I had and mm, it wasn't the greatest. Okay, so I promised you that uh, we're going to question some of choices. So let's get started. First, the video. I don't have a problem with 1080p cameras. They're well suited for indoors. So 1080p stream is fine. However, for some bizarre reason, first, you only have 10 frames per second on average. I had dips to like 5 or 2 frames per second and ups to like 15, but on average you should expect 10 frames per second. There is a bit of artifacting going on, which means out of those 10 frames, probably 3 or 4 frames gonna be artifacting as well. So you're essentially talking about like 6 or 7 frames per second of usable content, and that's not a lot. I mean, it's 2022, come on guys, we have expectations. Actually, there was one thing I should really mention, we're using a sound pairing. You have a camera sensor able to recognize images. Why don't we have like a QR? Why do I have to listen to my phone making beeps for like 30 seconds? Granted, it does work. But why do I have to go through that? It's ridiculous. Like... Wi-Fi recognized as success. You have a Bluetooth pairing. It works so great. What, what's going on, guys? I do not understand. Now, we do have a 1080p stream. Okay, it's 10 frames per second on average. But... I would usually complain about, you know, getting a bit of a pinch zoom and complaining about the lack of details because it's 1080p, not 2K, but you cannot even zoom on your willing cam. Like, what's going on? Why? Why do I have to export this footage to another third party app to actually watch this video and enhance, enhance it? And can I do like enhance with the sound? Like in CSI or something ridiculous? No? No, probably, maybe. I'll see if we can add effects in post. Continue of bashing on the video, functions, add the notifications. For some reason, most of the notifications didn't have thumbnails for me, but then later on I've noticed some of them would have a thumbnails on the movement, so I kind of don't know where I'm stuck with it at the moment. But in a cloud uh, storage, I can see the thumbnails for all events, but I cannot see them when the events are being stored on a local SD card. And I would imagine a lot of you are gonna take advantage of the fact that they can, you know, store things on a local card and would like to see the movements and thumbnails of those movements, etc. Because otherwise it's quite useless if you don't see them at glance and you can't figure out what just happened and uh, whether it should deserve your attention. I mean, this is this is a poor choice. There isn't even a proper timeline. Everything is just separated line by line in the cards event and this is the least efficient way of browsing your timeline to access the footage you need. <sighs> I honestly miss SwitchBot implementation of this. SwitchBot is doing such a great job at cameras. <laughs> Check it out there. It gets worse though. A lot of times when I'm clicking on the notification it will take me to an event but that event won't load, especially if you're accessing it remotely. I don't know if it's a problem with the server. It works semi-consistently on LAN, but as soon as you are using this camera from remote connection from outside your network using Son of Cloud, the experience isn't great, which is quite annoying because I would imagine a lot of you is going to be using it remotely, not when they are home, because that kills the purpose of having an IP camera, isn't it? Another thing that I'm slightly annoyed is the detection. While detection is split into a low, medium and high sensitivity, there is no really a way to kind of select human detection or anything similar, so you're gonna be spammed by any motion. And if you're gonna point this at a window and there's a tree and a bit of wind, expect to be flooded with motion events, even at the low settings. So you probably want to use it indoors and make sure you're gonna point the camera at the static settings. I'm already deflated with this video and I've not even got to the worst part. Half of the features are actually behind the paywall. Let's start with small things that really shouldn't be behind the payload. Two-way conversations over smart speakers are only available if you subscribe to Son of Service, which is priced around 30, what was it, 31.99 pounds per year per camera. I mean, that's a lot of dough to pay. Granted, you are paying for a storage as well as extra features, but still, certain things should not be behind payload. 
Another thing that is behind the payload is the ability to use external sensors. So if you have a contact sensor and you wish to trigger push notification or recording in a recording event mode, then you'll have to have a subscription to do it. You can't use automations because in automations you don't have the option to start recording. And lastly, you do get that extra storage for event recording. So, but that's 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 industry standard. So I'm not going to complain about it. I mean, at this point, it feels slightly like a scam, which is a funny story because as soon as you register this product, at least uh, the very early units, it will show up as scam uh, on your default device name. <laughs> I mean, sort of. Come on, do you check for those things? So you, you like. Uh... The camera is called Slim Cam or Cam Slim. I think they realized if they're gonna abbreviate Slim to S, what's gonna happen. But that came out too late and I actually get the scammy version with me. Son of, you get things right sometimes, but this one is none of it. I can only imagine that at some point you're gonna start backtracking on certain things because people are not going to buy your camera because there are so many great choices out there which actually don't lock you behind those silly solutions and offer you a decent storage for a decent money and this is the way to reel in the customers. I do understand that your customers will be eager to try RTSP as the main drive. However, if you're going to raise the payload like that, you're going to lose customers, not Gain ones. And when it comes to selecting IP cameras by son of honestly, don't go for this one. Get the first iteration. I know it looks ugly, but it's more useful. I know I'm probably gonna get in trouble with Son of, but uh, I owe you loyalty, and if Son of gonna make something wrong, I'm the first to call them out. I mean, after all, I care about their products, and honest feedback is the only way they can improve, and without it, well, they never gonna improve. So when it comes to camera recommendations, I reviewed a couple of them and it's gonna be linked all over and at the end of the video, so take a look. But if despite all of that, you are still convinced that the son of it's gonna fix all of it in a software and it's gonna be a really, really nice looking product that support RTSP, then, well, in the description of this video, you will find a link to this product so you can take a look at yourself and make your informed decision. As for now guys, I can't wait to talk about the next Elite product because it's actually well designed and works quite great. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I do not have a posting schedule so I can't promise you when the next video is gonna be up but if you want to keep in touch, you know how it works guys, there's a button here and then I'm not going to explain you that. Well, I'm going to tell you I've got a couple of social media so do follow me there because you're gonna get a heads up on what's going on, what's gonna be next and you can get the conversation started with me and come on, wouldn't you like to talk to me? Okay, probably wouldn't but anyway. Enjoy your evening. Take care. Bye.